Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Rudy Page, and we're going through our vaccine confidence dialogues. It's about, it's about being informed, it's about reassurance, and it's about choice. So I'm so pleased this afternoon to have with me a colleague, Mr. Abdul Shield. Abdul, how are you? Hi, Rudy. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Good, thanks. Great to see you. Abdul, tell us, tell us about yourself and your business. Right. So my name is Abdul Shil. I'm a co-founder director at Sahan Kez uh, CIC. We are a social enterprise uh, based in West London. Um, we offer care and support to the elderly, to the elderly um, and adults with disability. And we do this by retraining, um, hiring women who are from the remote majority from the refugee background, who English isn't their first language. Um, so we, in a way, help them integrate in society, give them the necessary skills that they need, and then we send them out as carers to the community. Excellent. So that's a lot of capacity building that you're, you're involved in. Yeah. And so we've been doing it nearly for 10 years now. Um, and we've got an unbelievable workforce of um, incredible women. Um, we call them community ambassadors um, because, uh, they, I mean, we believe in empowering them through the right information, and then they're able to then relay that within their community. So we don't just see them as carers, actually. We value them way more than that. Yes, so they're, they're providing that cultural communication, which obviously is necessary. Yeah. Yeah, great, great. So, so what made you decide to get involved in tackling vaccine hesitancy within, within your communities? So in a way, coming from a care industry, we actually had no choice um, but to, so it was a moral duty for us um, to first educate ourselves and then sort of break that information down to our carers so they can understand it. Um, so back in November, we sort of took a survey of our employees asking them, okay, who's interested in taking the vaccine? Ma majority of our employees all come from the African background. So we've sort of asked them who's interested in taking the COVID vaccine. Um, we got the response back. It was just over 35% of them said, yeah, we're interested in taking it. So so from then, automatically, we understood that, okay, we have a problem here <laughs> because we knew we were trying to get to close to 100%. Um, so, and actually prior to that, because of COVID, we've actually been running free mental health and well-being sessions for our carers um, with a professional psychotherapist um, because we felt that COVID took a lot of mental toll on our carers. So, as a employer, we told us, well, how can we in a way protect our carers? How can we safeguard them through all those problems? Um, so we've been doing that for the whole year, but then since November, the last almost 20 minutes of every session, uh, we are focusing on dispelling the myths around the vaccination, yeah. around the hysteria, around you know the WhatsApp messages, the WhatsApp videos, yeah. um, all these online messages. So um, and 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 you know they're scared naturally. You've got they've got their kids telling them, mom, don't take it um you they, they might want to take it but the kids are telling them, mom don't take it you're gonna die don't you don't know what's in it um so these you know unproven scientific warnings that that's what they were getting so anyway we've been working um with that since november and, um just trying to dispel the myths and the rumors um so at the moment now where we stand today we've got about almost over 95 percent of our carers who've actually taken the vaccine um so for us that's a success from 35 percent the remaining five percent some are on maternity leave some are on annual leave so um you know eventually once they come back to work i think they'll hopefully be taking it um so anyway that's what encouraged us to take it um and yeah we've been in a way we've, we've been impressed with the uptake um and for us is once you empower people with the right information once you equip people with the right knowledge they are then able to make the decision for themselves yeah, absolutely. So, so what has been the role of your diaspora leaders and social media platforms in providing information and reassurance that the vaccine is safe? Um, I mean, before I get to the diaspora bit, um, in a way, um, most of our carers were sort of encouraging each other. 
Okay. So when one person took it and saw that she was fine, they said, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and then that, th there was a ripple effect of people. But then not, not, not only that, uh, we both, they all, see, our carers are also friends with other carers who work for other companies. Yeah. Um, and when they took it, the people, the carers in the other companies said, wait, you took it, you're fine. Fine, I'll take it as well. So in a way, <laughs> I, what, from, I guess from my experience, I don't think any of them were sort of actively just sitting down and watching the news and seeing what could do. Mm -hmm. They were just relying on each other yes. to see who took it. Um, and then we sort of encouraged, and, and then we kind of made a little WhatsApp group for our carers where they could post their little COVID vaccine cards. Mm -hmm. So in a, way, in, a, in a way of encouraging yeah. people, so we put all of them into a group. So every time someone took the vaccine, they would take a picture of their card and then they'll post a picture of the WhatsApp and then it will, everyone say, well done. And the ones who haven't taken it, um, who are hesitant to take it are seeing the numbers increasing oh, and then the you know momentum. the momentum yeah, built so yeah. we're able to build momentum and that's yeah. what that's what's worked uh for us mm -hmm. um and additionally you know in a previous conversation i had with you um like anything you always have the early adopters like in a product life cycle you always have the people who are eager to take it so we had those up until january and mid-february and then we told ourselves okay cool we need to re-up that momentum so we decided to get a PhD holder faith leader who sort of knows sort of an Islamic studies and because majority of workers come from a Muslim background um, and someone like, and also a local GP. Uh, so initially we was gonna have it via Zoom just for our carers, but then, but, but then we actually told ourselves, you know what, this is actually bigger than us. It's actually for the whole community. Uh, I think this may be beneficial for our carers, but the community can also benefit from this. So we went to one of the diaspora channels, not channels, but one of the channels that the diaspora community watch, um, a local TV station where we're able to bring the community leader, we're able to bring the GP, um, and then we'll just, just an open dialogue about it. And then through that, we're able to dispel moments. Um, the faith leader was sort of talking from the faith perspective and saying how there's nothing wrong with taking it. Mm -hmm. um, the GP was reassuring people. Um, and then after, the, after that program finished, we've had calls from people from Birmingham, we've had calls from people from Manchester, uh, we've had people within the community who are encouraged to take it after we presented facts, because that's all you need to do, just present the right facts, information yeah, yeah. and allow them to make the decision after them. Great, great. So, so, so what has been the most effective means for providing information to the frequently asked questions of, about the, the vaccine? Um, so we relied on whatsapp because that's what we use a lot okay. uh we, we had little videos where we could um uh, again we, we don't want to send you know we don't want to send our carers 50 minute videos so we'd send them like five little five minute videos through whatsapp um because again you also have to understand where your customers are Absolutely. so there is there isn't a point for uh, i mean mo i mean <laughs> if you speak to most of our carers they get mo most of the information comes from social media yeah. most of the information comes from friends yeah. and family members um he said she said it's ranked yeah. higher than the bbc within. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's that so that's the, so then when you understand that then you you have to adapt your messaging to fit their needs um so we relied heavily on whatsapp videos we, again the clip the um the tv appearance we're able to chop that up and you know send them little daily videos yeah. again via whatsapp um just to encourage momentum just like you said yeah. um and then once you empower one person, again, these are community, we call them community ambassadors because they are now able to go to their families and say, I've taken the vaccine. Yeah. They are able to encourage their family members. Their family members are able to see they're fine. Um, they're able to then encourage other people who are in other sectors to take it. Um, and that's how you then sort of increase the uptake. Yeah, and, and they are the trusted messengers that we yeah. talk about. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, that's great. So. So how have you been able to improve community understanding on how the virus is spread among families at work and across the local communities? So we've been, so as a care company, we've been running infection control trainings since March um, heavily. We, we normally um, invest heavily with training our carers, mm -hmm. but this time we were, so we went one up, uh, we couldn't bring them to the office, obviously to, as we normally do. So we had to do it via Zoom. Um, so again, these are people who never used Zoom before that now are able to use Zoom regularly. Um, so we were able to train our carers via Zoom um, with the right 
best practices of infection control. And again, they are then able to teach their family members, this is how you wash your hands, this is how you get rid of your, this is how you dispose your gloves, I mean, your arm, this is how you get rid of your mask. So these little practices, they were now able to then once again, go to the community and teach people. This is what I learned. This is best practice. Let me teach you how to do it. Yeah. Um, and in a way, that's how we're able to sort of encourage just within our own circle, really. Great. That's that's really great work. And so um, just, just before we come to an end of our dialogue, can you just let everybody know your website address and everything if they want to follow up? Sure. Sure. So <clears throat> our website address is www.saharancares, S for sugar, A for alpha, H for hotel, A for alpha, N for November, and then cares, C-A-R-E-S, dot co, dot UK. Um, you can find us on Twitter, Sahan Cares. Uh, we really should be getting more active on Twitter, on social. That's our, that's our plan for this year. Um, there's a lot of incredible work that we do, and we want to sort of showcase that information to Absolutely. people. So we can, I guess, that's how we learn from each other. Great. And of course, we... We mustn't forget to mention Andrew Dakers at West London Business that connected sure, us. Yeah. Yes, so the, money back to Andrew. Yeah, because the role of the private sector and business is important, of course, in terms of employers. So yeah, was, um, and honestly, after the year that we've all had, I think how we come out of this pandemic is by businesses taking an active role within their community. Um, perception is now changing. Um, Consumers are now more savvy. Customers are savvy. They remember who's been there for them in the tough times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't constantly rely on government to give hand. I mean, I'm, it's not even handouts, but schemes. Yeah. Businesses have to take an active role within their own community, um, and that's how I, we're, that's how we're able to uplift and empower our community. Uh, absolutely, and of course, as we all say, the workforce is the community, and the community yeah. is the workforce. So it's yeah. really important to remember that. Great. Thanks a lot, Abdul. Look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank Take you care. so much for having me, really. I appreciate your time. No problem. Bye. Thank you.